Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone joining us on this Sabbath day. This is the Founder of Israel's Bible Studies program, Shabbat Shalom. We are going to get into a lesson today that I think it's about time that we cover it a little bit because there's a lot of misconceptions out there when it comes to the law. Many people don't realize when we say the law, that it, it, really, it really is a matter of which law are we referring to. Now we're going to deal with something today. The title of our lesson is The Old Schoolmaster. Because a lot of people don't say, oh, we're not under the law and things like that. But we have to understand that there are multiple laws in the Bible. Multiple categories of laws in the Bible. And this lesson today is aimed to clear up some, some of that confusion. So, with that being said, let's go on over to Romans 8. And we're going to just jump around a little bit to have people understand that Paul, because this is the apostle most people run to, talked about various laws. So let's take a look at this real quick. We're going to start over in Romans 8. Romans 8. And we're going to start real quick. Romans 8, and then let's pick it up at verse 7. Let's look at one of the laws that he repeated throughout his writings. Romans 8 and verse 7, and when you get there, brother, let the Bible speak. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Okay, now, the carnal mind is enmity against God. Go ahead. For it is not subject to the law of God. To the law of God. Neither indeed can be. Now, let's just go back one chapter. We're going to be in Romans a little bit. Let's go back one chapter, go chapter 7, and pick it up in verse 23. Now, we just read in Romans 8 and 7 that... There is a law of God. Now let's look, at, let's look at Romans 7 and 23. Romans 7 and 23. Let's take a look at that. But I see another law in my members. Yes. Warring against the law of my mind. Now he said he sees another law in his members. So there is in fact another law. There is a distinction. Okay, I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind. Go ahead. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, uh -huh. which is in my members. So we have the law of God and we have the law of sin, which is in his members, or we can say in our members. There's a law of sin in our members. Things that propels us, that pushes us, that urges us to violate the law of God. Now, let's go back to Romans 8 and go back to uh, verse 2. Romans 8 and verse 2. So it's real quick. We're just, it's just one chapter. So go back to Romans 8 Pick it up at verse 2, and we're going to see two laws. Romans 8 and verse 2. And when you get there, brother, let the Bible speak. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Okay, brothers and sisters, now did, he, now did he just mention two different laws? Amen. There you go. He talked about two different laws. So let's look at that. Now go to Romans 3. We're jumping around. We'll slow down in a second, but we're going to jump around a little bit because I want to get all these different laws out for you that Paul was talking about. And then we're going to cover another law. Romans 3 and 27. Romans 3 and 27. And let's look at yet again another law. Romans 3 and 27. And when you get there, brother, go ahead and read. Where is boasting then? Uh -huh. It is excluded. Yes. By what law? Uh -huh. Of works. Mm -hmm. Nay, mm -hmm. but by the law of faith. Okay, but by the law of faith. So there's another law. The law of faith. But we're going to get some clarity on some of this. Okay? So there's another law. There's a law of faith. Romans 9. We're still in Romans. Romans 9. Okay? And we're going to pick it up and 31. At verse 31. Go to Romans 9 and 31, and then we'll slow down a little bit on the flipping back and forth. Romans 9, verse 31. And when you get there, brother, let the Bible speak. But Israel, uh -huh. which followed after the law of righteousness, yes. have not attained to the law of righteousness. Oh, the law of righteousness. So what are we looking at here? We said the law of God, the law of sin, the law of spirit of life in Jesus Christ, the law of sin and death, the law of faith, the law of righteousness. We have one more. Now we're going to move over to, and keep your finger in Romans, but let's go over to Galatians real quick. We're going to uncover one more here. One more. Galatians 6. Go to Galatians. 
Revelation 6. And we're going to pick it up at verse 2. Now, remember, keep it in your mind. We covered the law of God, the law of sin, the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus, the law of sin and death, the law of faith, the law of righteousness. One more. Galatians 6 and 2. Go ahead, brother. Bear ye one another's burden. Yes. And so fulfill the law of Christ. There's another law. So... The next time you approach someone saying, oh, we need to keep the law, then someone obviously is going to run right back to Paul's writing and they're going to say, well, we're not under the law. Then you can say, well, which one? Now, you read for yourself. There's multiple laws. Now, some of them are interchangeable, but you got to read that with understanding. But we do know that they're not all the same. We do know that. There's a distinction. Okay, so we know that they're not all the same. So the next time when they say, well, we're not under law. Okay, which one? Because there's more than one law. There's more than one type of law. There's more than one set of laws. Okay, and they're right. There, there is a set of laws we are not under. But the difference is instead of just telling you, oh, well, we're just not under, we'll show you the laws we're not under. We'll show you that here in this lesson. Now, of course... Make no mistake, by no stretch of the imagination will this lesson, lesson be extensive in the sense that we can touch every law. But you will know enough to know the type of law we are not under. Okay, now let's go back to Romans 6 and 14. Because this is where the confusion begins. And again, the title of this lesson is The Old Schoolmaster, Sin and Sacrifice. We're going to look at that. The old school master, sin and sacrifice. Now, let's get into the meat of our lesson. Now, Romans 6 and 14, because this is what most people, they love to run to these writings with zero understanding. Well, Robert, how are you going to say someone doesn't understand? Well, Peter said Paul's writing is hard to be understood. So, obviously, someone messed up. Paul's writing up somewhere. He continues when he says, and they twist to their own destruction. Amen. So obviously, there is some confusion in what Paul says, and we're going to clear up some of that confusion. Romans 6 and 14. And when you get there, brother, let the Bible speak. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Yes. For ye are not under the law, yep. but under grace. But under grace. So there is a, there's a, we have to juxtapose those two. We have to say, okay, we're not under the law, but we're under grace. And then we said, okay, well, we just cut, we just unpacked a couple of laws. Oh, we're not under the law of God, but we're not under grace. But we're under grace. We're not under the law of sin, but we're under grace. We're not under the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, but we're under grace. We're not under the law of sin and death, but we're under grace. Or we're not under the law of righteousness, but we're under grace. See, it goes back to the elementary school game that we play. Which one of these does not belong? Which one just doesn't make sense? Now, under the good laws, doesn't it sound like the law of life in Christ Jesus? Doesn't that sound good? Imagine someone tell you, well, you're not under the law of life in Christ and Jesus. You're not under that, but you're under grace. Well, it sounds like you're taking me from something good and putting me under something else good. Doesn't it make more sense to take me from under something bad and put me under something good? So the only thing that makes sense here is that we're not under the law of sin and death. But under grace, what is that? Christ's blood forgiven us for our sins. Because what is the wages of sin? Death. So now, if we're under grace, we're no longer under the law of sin and death. That's what we have to understand, brothers and sisters. So, let's look at this. We said, for sin, there's your answer right there. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law of sin and death. But under grace. 15, brother. What then? Uh-huh. Shall we sin? We're still talking about sin. Okay, but go ahead. Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law of but sin under and death. Grace? Go ahead. God forbid. No. We cannot continue to sin just because we're not under the penalty. What's the penalty of sin? Death. So we're not under the penalty because of grace. Okay? We're not under the penalty because of grace. 16, but now he said, what then? Shall we sin? 
Because we're not under the law, but under grace, God forbid. 16, brother. Know ye not to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey. Do you serve sin? That's who you obey. Go ahead. His servants, yea, uh, ye are to whom ye obey. Okay, now, now he's going to give you this the distinction right here. Right here. Read that, brother. Now, which two is he talking about? Go ahead. Whether of sin unto death. The law of sin and death. Or unto obedience unto righteousness. The law of righteousness. Or the law of God. Or the law of Christ. This is why we say the Bible explains itself. What I said was not an interpretation. It was just what the Bible says. He gave you the distinction himself. He said, know ye not that to whom you yield your, yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. Here's the two laws. Whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. The, those, those are the laws. We saw, we saw that there was a law of righteousness. We saw that there's a law of sin and death. This is what he's talking about. There is your distinction. Let's go to Romans 8 and 1. 8 and 1. We're going to look at this a little bit more. We're still in Romans. You just skip it up two chapters. Romans 8 and 1. So we can look at this thing and walk it down. Romans 8 and 1, and uh, when you get there, brother, let the Bible speak. There is therefore now no condemnation uh -huh. to them which are in Christ Jesus. Pause. Now, he said there's no, condem uh, no condemnation to, to them which are in Christ Jesus. So you're under the law of Christ. There's no condemnation. Why? You're not under that law of sin and death. You don't have to suffer the penalty. You earned it. I earned it. I earned death all by myself. I deserve it for the sin I have committed. I have come, I have done. Getting tongue tied here. I earned that. However, going under the law of grace, going under the law of Christ, he removed that penalty, and now I'm under grace. That's how it works for both of us, brothers and sisters. Okay? Now, but there's something you have to do. Because this ministry is not about, oh, you, you, we don't have to do anything. We're not about that, okay? We know we have to do something. But what is it that we have to do? He said, there is, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ. What? Who walk not after the flesh. Now, walk is an action word. Go ahead. But after the spirit. Yes, sir. Verse 2. For the law of spirit of life uh -huh. in Christ Jesus. Has done what? Has made me free from the law of of sin and death. So how come you're not being read that part? Everyone said, hey, we're not under the law. Well, how come they don't make the distinction? Why? Does it make sense? Does this even make sense? Um, well, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the Ten Commandments. Doesn't say that. It said made me free from the law of sin and death. The Ten Commandments is not the law of sin and death. Oh, no, Robert, you're twisting. No, I'm not, because when the rich and ruler came over to Jesus, he said, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said, keep the commandments. Obviously, that's a summary of the story. Go back and read it for yourself. But he said, keep the commandments. So either he told him that's how you, you get eternal life, or Jesus condemned that man because the Ten Commandments is death. We know that is silly, brothers and sisters. Here's the, here is the distinction right here. With no help from me whatsoever. And yet, they won't read it to you. They don't want you to be accountable. Because guess what? You are accountable for your behavior. You are accountable for your actions. And he said we have to walk. What do we have to do? We have to, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. What we read. And then we read over in Romans 7. And, no, I'm sorry, let me back it up, uh, Romans 8 and 1, I'm sorry. And therefore there's no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, because we know the carnal mind is enmity against God, but after the spirit. Jesus said, the words I say to you are spirit. And why call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things that I say? And if you love me, keep my commandments. So now you know how we should walk, right? So when you sit under a pastor... Please have him be specific. Because that will save you. 
must be specific. Okay? So he says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Romans 7 and 20. Romans 7 and 20. Now I hope there's some clarity coming out in this. Romans 7 and 20. We're still in Paul's writings. Romans 7 and 20. This is for those who think Paul came and preached something else. No, it's just that Paul had to teach from scratch Gentiles who knew nothing of God. So you have to have some understanding when you get to Paul's writing. In fact, I don't have a problem with Paul's writing. But I would suggest to you, if you're new to the Bible, I would say read everything else first before you get to Paul's writing. Read the Old Testament and read all the New Testament. Yes, I'm aware Paul wrote most of the New Testament. Okay? I know that. But read everything else. Read the Gospels. Read James. Everyone else. Read John 1, 2, 3. Read Revelations. Read everything else. Then read Paul's writing. And then I hope you get some understanding. Because everyone else is pretty clear. Paul had a different task to do. And you have to consider, who was he talking to? Romans 7 and 20. When you get there, brother, let the Bible speak. Now, if I do, then I would not. Okay. It is no more I that do it, uh -huh. but sin that dwelleth in me. That is that law that's in his flesh that he's talking about. Continue, brother. I find then a law yep. that when I would do good, yep. evil is present with me. Yes. For I delight in the law of God uh -huh. after the inward man. That's how you follow after the spirit. He said, I delight in the law of God. So he's not saying, this, this is not the one that you're not under. Okay? The, the law of God, that's not the one that, oh, we're no longer under. You're still under the law of God. Okay? He's come to judge and make war. Judge you based on what? Okay? Keep going, brother. But I see another law in my members. Yes. Warring against the law of my mind. Two different laws. Go ahead. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin. Yes. Which is in my members. Yeah, the law of sin is in us. Now let's see how he felt about the law of sin which is in us. Go ahead. Oh, wretched man that I am. Yes, I can say the same thing. Oh, wretched man that I am. Go ahead. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? That would have to be Christ, but go ahead. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Uh -huh. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. What? He's going to serve the law of God, but I thought you were no longer under the law. Why is he trying to serve the law of God? I'm not un we're not under the law. Oh, you're trying to put us under the law. See, the problem is, you let your Sunday preacher take you from under the law of God. That's where your problem began. He didn't distinguish which law you were not under, but you're going to get it today. Let's go. James 1. Let's go to James 1, and we'll go back to Romans in a sec. James 1. James 1. Let's look at this, because he was talking about the law that's in his body, the law that's in his flesh, which is the law of sin. Okay, James 1. Let's pick it up at verse 12. James 1. Let's pick it up at verse 12. Let the Bible speak, brother. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Yes. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. So if you overcome this sin, guess what you get? The crown of life. Okay? So, there is a reward. Uh, he said he come to reward every man according to their works. Here's one of the things that you get to do, brothers and sisters. You overcome that temptation, and when you do, you will receive the crown of life. Immortality. Go ahead, brother. Which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Yes, and if you love me, keep my commands. Go ahead, verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted. Yes. I am tempted of God. Uh -huh. For God cannot, cannot be tempted with evil. Yes. Neither tempteth he any man. But God doesn't tempt you with evil. He does not. He tests you, but he doesn't even test you with evil. He whips you. He chastises you because you deserve it. But he doesn't tempt you with evil. He's not going to tempt you with pork. He's not going to tempt you with Christmas and idolatry. He's not going to tempt you with any of that. He'll test you. He won't tempt you with any of that stuff. So let no man say, oh, God is tempting me. No, no, no. You got to work out your own faith. Hold fast at which you believe. Go ahead, brother. 
But every man is tempted uh -huh. when he is drawn away of his own lust and what and enticed. Oh, so man, you're tempted on your own. And of course, the devil. Dev I say we have to deal with three things that's, that, that we suffer from. That obstacle, that hurdle that we have to clear is Satan, sin, I mean, Satan, self, and society. That's it. Those three S's, that's what we have to deal with. We have to deal with Satan, we have to deal with ourselves, and we have to deal with society. That's what you have to overcome, brothers and sisters. Okay? And it ties. 315, brother. Then with lust, uh -huh. have conceived yes. and bringing forth sin. Bring forth sin. And sin, mm -hmm. when it is finished, mm -hmm. bringing forth death. You just read the law of sin and death. We just read the law of sin and death. This is the law that you are no longer under if you walk after Christ. Romans 6. Romans 6. Let's go to Romans 6 and 23. Romans 6, pick up verse 23. Romans 6 and 23. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. For the wages of sin is death. Okay. But the gift of God is eternal life mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ our Lord. Right. So you can walk after sin and death, or you can walk after Christ and get life. That's what that's the decision that we have to make. Let's go back. We're still in Romans 6, but let's go drop back to verse 16. Drop back to verse 16. Go ahead, brother. Know ye not uh -huh. that whom ye yield yourselves mm -hmm. servants to obey. Yeah. His servants ye are to whom ye obey. Yeah. Whether of sin unto death. Yeah. Or of obedience unto righteousness. Okay, we read that before, but that I want to make a point. What you obey, that's whom you are servant to. You can be the servant of the law of God or you can be the servant of sin. Okay? Servant of sin will get you death. Servant of the, of the law of, of God will get you life. That's what it comes down to. We're still in Romans 6. Back up to verse 1, brother. And when you get there, go ahead and read. What shall we say then? Yep. Shall we continue in sin? Yep. That grace may abound? Uh-huh. God forbid. No, no, and no. Go ahead. How shall we that are dead to sin mm -hmm. live any longer therein? Verse 12 will let us know. Go, go to verse 12. That will let us know how, how should we live. Go ahead. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, uh -huh. that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Exactly. We should not obey it in the lust thereof. That's what we're talking about, brothers and sisters. Okay? That's how specific we have to be. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap this up because we're talking about sin, the law of sin, and then we're going to switch gears and talk about the law of sacrifice. Let's go to Romans 7 and we'll finish this up. Right now we're talking about the law of sin, okay, and then we will move on to sacrifice. Romans 7, and pick it up at verse 7. Romans 7 and verse 7. Go ahead, brother. What shall we say then? Uh huh. Is the law sin? Is the law sin? Is the ten, are the Ten Commandments sin? Go ahead. God forbid. Uh huh. Nay, I had not known sin, uh -huh. but by the law. I didn't know sin, but by the law. That's why Peter said that Paul's writing is hard to be understood. One minute he's saying we're not under the law, don't even do that, don't have to worry about it. But then he said, well, I delight in the law of God. And then he says, well, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. No. So the law is not sin. So wait a minute, Paul. Do we do it or we not do it? Or is he just talking about two different laws? That's what it comes down to, brothers and sisters. So what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. No. He said no twice, basically. He said God forbid. Then he said nay. Both means no. Okay. I had not known sin but by the law. If it wasn't for the Ten Commandments, I wouldn't even know what sin is. Is. And when I'm not talking about just the Ten Commandments, brothers and sisters. I'm just saying that for the sake of this lesson. We're talking about really all the laws that apply. All the laws, including the Ten Commandments, including the dietary law, including the feast days of the Lord. Okay? For I had not known lust. Go ahead, brother. For I had not known lust, mm -hmm. except the law had said, uh -huh. Thou shalt not covet. I wonder where he got that from. Hmm. 
Verse 8, brother. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment. There it is. Go ahead. Writing me all manner of the con uh, concupiscence. There you go. For without the law, sin <laughs> was dead. There you go. Mm -hmm. So all manner of wickedness. All manner of lustful uh, desires. All manner of that. For without the law, sin was dead. Verse 9. For I was alive without the law one. Yeah, when I didn't know anything about the law, oh, I was alive. I lived it up. But then what? But when the commandment came, uh -huh. sin revived and, and I died. And then I died. Because what? Sin bringeth forth death. He realized, oh, wow, I messed up big time. I messed up big time. Verse 10. And the commandment, uh -huh. which was ordained to life. Wait a minute. It is ordained. The commandments is ordained to life? So it makes sense when Christ told the rich young ruler, you know, to in order to, in order to have eternal life, keep the commandments. And Paul just backed it up again when he said, and the commandment, which was ordained to life. What happened? When, once he realized he was messing up, finish that. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Without the law, sin was dead. Yeah, I found to be no. Continue, bro. For I was alive with the law once. Uh huh. But when the commandment came, uh huh, sin revived and I died. Uh huh. First and 10. the commandment, mm -hmm. which was ordained to life, yep. I found to be unto death. Yeah, he was killing himself, just like all of us today. We keep continuing in sin and thinking it's no big deal. It's a big deal. Now we wrestle like he wrestles. He wrestles through his flesh. We try really, really hard. That's fine. But we have to keep trying. Now, we're going to switch gears. We were talking about the law of sin and death. Let's transition into the law of sacrifice. Another law we're no longer under. Another law we are no longer under. Me and Brother Israel had to go round and round in circles with some brothers who call themselves witnesses of Jehovah. And they kept saying, so you keep the law? Yes, we do. All the laws? Uh, no. Oh, so you don't know? Let me explain. We keep the ones that apply. Oh, so you kill an animal? No, we don't. See, that's what happens when you lump all the laws together and think they're all the same. And you don't read the Bible to show which ones still stand and which one is done away with. So we're going to focus on the law of sacrifice right now. Let's look at that. Galatians. Go with me to Galatians 3. Let's go to Galatians 3 and take a look at it real quick. Let's look at this law of animal sacrifice. Galatians 3, let's pick it up in verse 1. Galatians 3, verse 1, and go ahead and read. Oh foolish Galatians, Yes. who have bewitched you, mm -hmm. that ye should not obey the truth. Yes. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ have been evidently set forth, uh -huh. crucified among you. Yes, verse 2. This is only what I learned of you. Mm -hmm. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law. Yes. Or by the hearing of faith. Okay, he said, and he basically asked you, how did you receive the, the, uh, the Spirit? Did you receive it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Okay, did you receive it by killing an animal or by the hearing about Christ and his sacrifice? Really simple. Verse 6, brother. Skip down to 6. Even as Abraham believed God, uh -huh. and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Yes, it was. 7. Now ye therefore that they which are of faith, uh -huh. the same are the children of Abraham. Now, if you are of faith because he believed the Lord, and we are of faith because we believe the Lord, we believe Christ, we believe his resurrection, we believe his atoning sacrifice, we believe he is the high priest on the right hand of the Father. That is our faith. Okay? And we are the ch that makes you one of the children of Abraham. Verse 8. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. Yep. Preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, Yes. And these shall all nations be blessed. Verse 10. Skip down to 10. For as many as are the works of the law are under the curse. Yep. For it is written. Mm-hmm. Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Yeah, Kurt, yeah, yeah, that is true. That is true. You have to do that. That are written in a that are written in a book of the law to do them. We have to do it. But let's get a little bit of understanding. Uh, Eleven. 
But no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. Uh -huh. It is evident for... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, evident. For the just shall live by faith. Yeah. So no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. Now, you're not justified in and of itself for the Ten Commandments because it really, it pronounced you guilty. Because that's how you know that you're guilty. You're not justified by the, the, the blood of bulls and goats because it can never really take away sins anyway. It is evident, but it is by faith. But we're talking about, you know, killing an animal. It's evident because the blood of bulls and goats could never really take away sins. Okay? That's evident. For the just shall live by faith. Go ahead. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. Uh -huh. It is evident. Uh -huh. For the just shall live by faith. Continue. And the law is not of faith, mm -hmm. but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Yeah, you, 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 you have to live in them. Go ahead. Christ have redeemed us from the curse of the law, uh -huh. being made a curse for us. Now, what was the curse of the law? It was death. The sin brought about death, and he redeemed you from that penalty. Go ahead. For it is written, mm -hmm. curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Let's see where we, where we get that from. Deuteronomy 21. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 21. Deuteronomy 21. Because the whole Bible goes together. Deuteronomy 21, and we will pick it up in verse 21. Deuteronomy 21. Go ahead, brother, read. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stone. Uh -huh. That he died. Yes. So shalt thou put evil away from among you. Uh-huh. And all Israel shall hear and fear. Yeah, yeah. That's that see, that's what we need, man. Need that sometimes. Sometimes the Lord has to make an example of someone just so we can get it through our head that he means what he says. Verse 22. And if a man hath committed a sin worthy of death, uh-huh. And he be put to death, uh -huh. and thou hang him on a tree. That's what they mean by that. Thou hang him on a tree. Let's go back to New Testament and Galatians real quick. Let's look at this. Galatians 3. Galatians 3. Galatians 3, let's pick it up at verse 15. Galatians 3 and 15, let the Bible speak, brother. Brethren, mm -hmm. I speak after the matter of men. Yes. Though it be but of a man's covenant, uh -huh. yet it be confirmed. Mm -hmm. No man disnulleth mm -hmm. yes. or addeth thereto. Yes, sir. Now, I'm sorry. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Yes. He hath said not, and to the seeds as of men, mm -hmm. but as of one. And the seed, thy like seed, which is Christ. Okay, go ahead. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before the God in Christ, uh -huh. the law, mm -hmm. which was 430 years after, yep. cannot disannul mm -hmm. that it should make the promise of none effect. And what do you mean by this, brothers and sisters, real simple? Like he said, the promises, which was 430 years after, because see, the Lord spoke his promises when he brought Abraham up and he said, look at, look at all this. I'm going to give you all this, this, this promised land and all that. That was 400 years before Israel, because we're talking about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. There was 400 years before Israel went to uh, uh, Egypt and went into captivity. And when they were there, they were there over 400 years in slavery and hard bondage. So what he's saying here is that the promise that the Lord made to Abraham cannot be disannulled. Because of the exodus, because of when the law came in the exodus and repeated in Deuteronomy, see, it's 400 years difference. So he says, so the law didn't come, come, come in, the Ten Commandments, didn't come in and destroy everything that the Lord promised to Abraham, is what he's saying. He made that promise and he's going to keep that promise of Abraham. And we're granted into the same type of faith that Abraham had. We have to get this with a little bit of understanding, but let's take a look at this. Okay, where are we, 17, brother? 18. 18, go ahead. For the inheritance be of the law, uh -huh. it is no more of promise. Okay, so he, Abraham's not going to get.
get it because of the law. The law came 400 years later, meaning on stone. At first the law was given through the word, like the law, like, like, like the knowing what's clean and unclean came through Noah, which we know is way before the Israelites. Came through Noah, he said seven clean and two of the unclean. Okay, so all the other laws that came verbally, okay, but it was written on stone, and from Abraham to that is over 400 years, okay, well over that, because, because Israel was in Egypt 400, more than 400 years in slavery, okay, so that's what he's saying, so for the inheritance be of the law, it is no more promise, so the law is not going to disannul what, what God said to Abraham, go ahead. Wherefore the serveth the law. Now hold on. He said, uh, let's finish 18. He said, okay. for uh, if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more promise. Continue. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Exactly. Now, let's look at 19 real quick. Let's look at 19. Go ahead. Wherefore then serveth the law. So why should we kill an animal? Because we're talking about animal sacrifice. Why should we kill an animal? Continue. It was added because uh -huh. of transgression. Oh. It was added. Now, I know a lot of people think that's the Ten Commandments, but let's just go back and read it and pretend it's the Ten Commandments. And let's see if it makes sense. Wherefore, serveth the Ten Commandments? Continue, brother. It was added because of transgressions. How did you add ten to ten? How did you add... How, why should we serve the Ten Commandments? Because the Ten Commandment was added because of transgression. No, that doesn't make sense. It was in place and a law was added because you broke the ten. There you go. That's why. We didn't add ten and then ten was added because of the ten. ten. It makes no sense, brothers and sisters. Okay? So why should we serve the law? So why should we kill an animal? Okay? Why should we kill an animal? It was added because of transgression. Because sin is transgression of the law. Amen. See 1 John 3 and 4. Okay? Continue that. Till the seed should come uh -huh. to whom the promise was made. Uh -huh. And it was ordained by the angels uh -huh. in the hand of the mediator. Okay, until the seed should come. And we know the seed is Christ. Mm -hmm. So we had to kill an animal until the seed should come. Remember, we're talking about the old schoolmaster. Let's go to Leviticus 4. Let's go to Leviticus 4. And we'll pick it up. In verse 2, see this is where a lot of confusion happens when people just say the law and not be very specific. And most New Testament Christians, modern day Christianity, you say the law, they lump it all together. It's all together. I had a discussion with someone already and it was the same thing. I asked, well, which law? What, what law is that? And we're talking about this very same verse. He was trying, I asked a simple question. I just simply said, are we supposed to keep the Ten Commandments or not? Are Christians supposed to keep the Ten Commandments or not? And he said, oh, Lord, he, he done away with that. We don't have to do that. I said, all, all of them? And then he gave me the scripture reference. And that was the one that he gave. He said, wherefore serve the law? It was added because of transgression. I said, well, what was added? He said, the Ten Commandments. I said, the Ten is added to the Ten? Because of transgression? Oh, well, I'm going to throw in 10 because you broke the other 10. It made no sense. Mm -hmm. What happened to the law of animal sacrifice? It just goes bye-bye. No, no, no animal sacrifice. But yet, when we're not talking about the 10 and we're just having a casual conversation, it's like, yeah, yeah, those Jews, they used to kill animals to atone for their sins and stuff, da, 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 all that. But when it's time to start obeying God, or whatever, they lump it all together. The ten, the animal sacrifice, you know, the dietary law, we can eat what we want, just pray over it. Sprinkle Jesus on it. Yeah, just, just, sprinkle, just, just sprinkle some Jesus on it, that's all. That's all. It, it may, you know what? It may as well be a condiment. It may as well, it makes it all clean. Let's just sprinkle a little Jesus on it. Okay, we can eat what we want. We can do what we want. Yeah, well. Don't listen. Don't listen. To the feast days that he said, well, Robert, you always talk about that because that's what's in the Bible. We talk about what's in the Bible. I can't really talk a lot about Christmas because it's not in the Bible. Amen. And a little bit that's in there, he says not to do. <laughs> so that's, that's why we talk about that. Leviticus 4 and 2. Now, it was added because of transgression. That means when you messed up, you had to kill an animal to atone for your sins. 
But just in case for those who are saying, oh, I may be making it up, let's go to Leviticus 4 and 2. The Leviticus 4 and 2. And when you get there, brother, go ahead and read. Leviticus 4 and 2. Let the Bible speak. Speaking to the children of Israel. Yes. Saying, if any soul shall sin through ignorance, yes. is any of the commandments of the Lord. Okay, now let's pause just for a second, then I want you to continue. He said, because I want this to be very, very clear. If a soul, a man or woman, if a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord, continue. Concerning things which ought not to be done uh -huh. and shall do against any of them. Yes, continue, brother. If the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people. Okay, so now he's dealing with the priest first, but go ahead. Then let him bring forth his sin, uh -huh. which he has sinned, mm -hmm. a young bullock, mm -hmm. without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. Yes, sir. Verse 4. And he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. Yes. And shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head. And what? And kill the bullock before the Lord. And what else? And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood uh -huh. and bring into the tabernacle of the congregation. Do what? And the priest shall dip his fingers in the blood mm -hmm. and sprinkle the blood seven times before the Lord, uh -huh. before the veil of the sanctuary. Okay, so the priest would come in and he would have to make this sacrifice for himself because he's got to clear his sins. He's got to take care of him. Then he needs to sacrifice the bullock and he needs to cut the bullock's throat. He needs to get that blood. He needs to bring that blood uh, in front of the whole congregation because we need to see, we, we have to learn a lesson, we have to have a visual. So when we see that blood, we say, okay, we messed up, we sinned. That, that, that animal shed its blood, a clean animal, I, I might add, had to shed its blood because we messed up. And then the priest would dip his fingers in that blood and he would go be to the veil of the temple and he would sprinkle that seven times. Okay, he was sprinkled that seven times before the veil. Now, only one time during the year, on the Day of Atonement, he would go inside the veil. Other places in the Bible say that if he went any other time, God would kill him on the spot. He cannot go beyond that veil, but one time a year, which is called the Holy of Holies, he can go in there one time, Day of Atonement, one time in a year. But other than that, he sprinkled, sprinkled it on the veil right there to atone for the sins. And this was added because of transgression. If any man sin against the commandments of the Lord, this is what the priests were supposed to do. First John. Let's go to First John. He said, and the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. That is what's supposed to happen. Now let's look at this. 1 John 3 and 4. 1 John 3 and 4. When you get there, brother, let the Bible speak. Whosoever committed sin yep. transgresseth also the law. Yes, sir. For the sin is a transgression of the law. Yes, sir. And that's exactly what we're talking about here, brothers and sisters. Really, really simple. Romans. Romans 5. Romans 5 and 12. Because we, we are here, we're going to clear up this whole law. Which law? Law of sin and death. Law of sin and sacrifice. Ten commandments. Okay? We're just making a distinction between these particular laws. Okay? Now, we didn't get all into the Ten Commandments, so we have other lessons about that. And besides that, you know what they are. That's why we're spending a lot of time on the law of sin and the law of animal sacrifice. Because these are the ones that are not talked about very often. Okay? Romans 5 and 12. When you get there, brother, go ahead. Wherefore, mm -hmm. as by one man sin entered into the world, yes. the sin, I mean the death by sin, yes. and so death passed upon all men, mm -hmm. for that all have sinned. And we all have sinned. Now, go ahead, 13. For until the law of sin was in the world, yep. but sin is not imputed when there is no law. And you know, I want, let's go to Romans 3. Let's go to Romans 3, but I want to touch on that for a second while you go over there. Go to Romans 3. But he said, for law, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. So the person is telling you, oh, we're not under the law. We don't have to do that. So now, without them considering the implications, it's okay to kill somebody 
There's no problem. Why are you mad? Why are you mad because someone gets shot down in Ferguson? Why are you mad because the police kick down the door and shoot a uh, seven-year-old little girl? Why are you mad? Because we are under the law. Why are you mad because someone sneak in the back door and sleep with your spouse? There is no thou shalt not commit adultery. Why are you upset? We're not under the law, remember? Why are you mad because someone deceives you? There is no thou shalt not lie. What are you upset about? Why are, you, why, why are you so heartbroken because someone disrespects their parents? You don't have to honor them anymore. Send them away. Consider the implications. Why are you mad because someone is coveting what you have, don't want you to have it, and conspires to get it from you or hope you lose it? Or covet. It doesn't matter. Oh, well, let's serve the Lord. No, you don't have to serve the Lord. Because he, he says, you shall have no other God before him. But without the law, you can serve any God you want. Mm -hmm. But you're continuing to let someone say to you that the law doesn't matter. We're not under that law. Consider the implications, brothers and sisters. Consider the implications. You can serve any law. You can practice idolatry. You can have uh, crucifixes and Virgin Marys and all that because idolatry doesn't matter either. You can use his name and take it in vain. It does not matter. You don't have to worry about the Sabbath day either. The same Sabbath that he says is a sign between me and my people. Amen. Don't worry about that. Point is, consider the implications. So the true question is like when someone says we're not under the law, you ask them, which law are we not under? Consider that. Galatians 3 and 20. Let's take a look at this. Galatians 3 and 20. Let's continue, brother. 3 and 20. Go ahead. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one. Yes. But God is one. Yes. Is the law then against the promises of God? Go ahead. God forbid. Continue. For if there had been a law given which should have given life, mm -hmm. very righteousness should have been by the law. Continue. But the scripture has concluded all under sin. Yes, we are. Go ahead. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Yes, go ahead. But before faith came, uh -huh. we were kept under the law. Yes, we had to kill that animal. We were kept under the law of animal sacrifice. But guess what? The, the scripture will explain itself. Go ahead. Shut up unto faith, uh -huh. which should afterwards be revealed. And what was that, 24? Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster uh -huh. to bring us unto Christ, uh -huh. that we might be justified by faith. Yeah, so killing an animal and being a, having atonement for our sins was a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. So instead of killing an animal and believing that that will atone for your sins, believe in Christ that he will atone for your sins. Go ahead, brother. 25. But after that faith has come, which is Christ, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. So we don't kill an animal anymore. 27. I mean, 20, 26. Go ahead. For ye are all the children of God by faith uh -huh. in Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ uh -huh. have put on Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we're going to go ahead and let's go down. Now, I want you to Read. No, we have time. We have time. Let's go ahead. Let's go to Dan. Let's go to Dan. Because this is another place I had to uh, uh, help a brother. You know, when, when I said we don't do the animal sacrifice, and he just thought we were just kind of arbitrarily picking and choosing. Oh, we, we, don't kill the, we don't do animal sacrifice. No, we don't do animal sacrifice because the Bible says that the Messiah was going to come, and we just read that we're no longer under the schoolmaster, which is the law of animal sacrifice. We don't have to kill an animal anymore. But that was also prophesied in Daniel 9, which is where we're going now. Daniel 9, and we're going to pick it up at verse 24. And this is why I had to bring the brother over here. Okay? Daniel 9 and verse 24. So he doesn't think we just pick and choose. Daniel 9, verse 24. When you get that, brother, go ahead and read. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people uh -huh. and upon thy holy city. Yes. To finish the transgression mm -hmm. and to make an end of sin. To put an end to sin. Go ahead. 
and to make reconciliation for the iniquity. Paying for iniquity, go ahead. To bring everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy uh -huh. and to anoint the most holy. Who's the most holy? Christ. Okay, 26, brother. And after three score and two weeks mm -hmm. shall Messiah be cut off. Who's the Messiah? Christ. Go ahead. But not for himself. Who did he die for? Us. Go ahead. And the people of the prince mm -hmm. shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Yes. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. Flood is simply symbolic for army. Go ahead. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. Okay, 27, brother. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. This is a prophetic week. How long was Christ's ministry? It was three and a half years. That's a, so it was three and a half years. So a prophetic week is seven years. Okay, so we know prophetic week is seven years, and he was, and, and his ministry was three and a half years, so that's half a seven. Let's look at that. Go ahead. And the midst of the week, uh -huh. he shall cause the sacrifice uh -huh. and the oblation to see. Oh, okay, so in the midst of the week, so let's go to Hebrews. We know, we know what the, red, the rest of that is. He said that he shall cause, he shall, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifices and oblations to cease. Why is that important? Well, it's important because um, it's a literal week. He was cut off in the middle of a literal week, seven-day week, and he was cut off in the middle of a seven-year prophetic week as well. His ministry was three and a half years. So that's when you start getting tribulation, three and a half years, because he's going to finish it when he comes back. That's how we get some understanding. He had to be cut off because he had to atone for everyone's sin. Anybody who accepts it and believes. Okay? And then he caused the sacrifices and oblations to see. What are the sacrifices and oblations? Killing an animal. He had to cause that to cease. Hebrews 10, brother. Hebrews 10 and we'll wrap it up here. Last place we will go. Hebrews 10. No, last two places. But let's see if we can get to it. Hebrews 10. Pick it up at verse 1. Hebrews 10, verse 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, uh -huh. and not very image of the thing, uh -huh. can never with those sacrifices... Never with offered, those... Never with those what? Sacrifices, okay. which they offer uh -huh. year by year continually, make the comers there to perfect. Okay, go ahead. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. Yes. Because that, that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. Yeah, so if, if it did work, if killing an animal did work, then it would have made everyone perfect and we wouldn't have no more consciousness of sin. But we were always made aware of our sin because we kept committing it and we had to keep killing an animal. And so we were always reminded of it. Continue, brother. But in those sacrifices, uh -huh. there's a remembrance again made of sins every year. That's what I just said. Go ahead, verse 4. For it is not possible uh -huh. that the blood of bulls and goats uh -huh. should take away sin. Okay, verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world. That's Christ. When he come into the world, go ahead. He said, mm -hmm. sacrifice and offering, uh -huh. thou wouldest not. He didn't want sacrifice and offering, but go ahead. But a body has thou prepared me. The Father prepared a body for the Son. Let's go to verse 9. Verse 9. Then said he, uh -huh. Lo, I come to do thy will, yes. O God. That's what Christ said. Didn't he say that? I come to do thy will. Not my will, but thy will be done. Go ahead. He take away the first. Animal sacrifice. Go ahead. That he may establish the second. His body. His sacrifice. Okay, go ahead. By the which mm -hmm. will we are sacrificed, I mean, sanctified uh -huh. through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ uh -huh. once for all. Yeah, he didn't have to die every year. He didn't have to keep doing that like animals, like, like, like when we had to kill animals. He didn't have to do it. Christ died once for all. That's it. One time. And that is faith. Right there, brothers and sisters. Verse 11. And every priest sat in the day in ministry mm -hmm. and offering oftentimes the same and, sacrifice. Yep. Which can never take away sin. Yeah, so we don't do that anymore. There's no need now. There's no need to do that. We have a high priest right now who didn't have to atone for his own sins. He never made any sins. Who already died the ultimate perfect sacrifice for us. And he didn't have to do it again. Okay? Twelve. But this man, uh -huh. after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, yep. sat down on the right hand of God. Thirteen. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Until he comes back and cleans house. Skip down to verse 23. 
Let us hold fast mm -hmm. the profession of our faith yes. without wavering, mm -hmm. for he is faithful that promise. That's what you need to hold fast to, brothers and sisters. That's what we need to hold on to. This is what we had just read, that he done it for us, but he did the animal sacrifice. He didn't do the Ten Commandments for you, but he did take away the animal sacrifice for you. Let's go on over to... My battery's about to die here. Let's go on over to... You know what? Go to 26. We got to get this in. Go to 26. Go ahead. For if we sin willfully, yep. after that, uh -huh. we have received the knowledge of the truth, uh -huh. there remains no sacrifice for sin. Okay, so we can't sin willfully. We can't just do it all willy-nilly. So what happens if we're not under the law? We read this in Hebrews. Still New Testament. That's why I said read all the other books, old and new, before you go to Paul. Then you get some understanding. Okay, now I know many believe Paul wrote this, but it still works both ways. If he didn't write it, book of Hebrews says that we cannot sin willfully. If he did write it, then Paul is saying we cannot sin willfully. So it doesn't matter. We cannot sin willfully. Let's go to our last place before we get out of here. Now, the, the last of the, go to Colossians 2, and that'll be the last place we're going to. Colossians 2. And just to finish where we were in uh, verse 27... Now, he said, there remain no more sacrifice for sins. 27 says, but a certain fearful looking of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. So if we go on sinning willy-nilly, we don't care, we're not under the law, it doesn't matter, Christ done it all. We have fiery indignation waiting for us. Colossians 2, and we're going to wrap it up right here. Colossians 2, pick it up at verse 10. Go to verse 10, Colossians 2, verse 10, and we'll close this lesson out. Colossians 2 and verse 10. When you get there, brother, let the Bible speak. And ye are complete in him. Yes. Which is the head of all the principality and power. Yes. In whom also ye are circumcised uh -huh. with a circumcision made without hand. Yeah, this is the circumcision of our heart and of our mind. Go ahead. And putting off the body of the sins of the flesh yep. by circumcision of Christ. Yes, sir. 12. Buried with him in baptism. Yes, we are. Wherein also you are risen mm -hmm. with him through the faith of the operation of God. Yes. Who have raised him from the dead. Yes. And you, being dead in your sins mm -hmm. and the uncircumcision of your flesh. Yes. Hath he quickened together with him. Uh-huh. Having forgiven you all trespasses. Now, he's forgiven us all trespasses. Now, let's look at something he did. Now, remember everything we were just reading about the law of animal sacrifice. Look at verse 14. Go ahead. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances uh -huh. that was against us. Why was killing an animal against you? Because it never could really take away sins. Go ahead. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against you. What? Which was contrary to us. Because the animal didn't do the sin. You and I did. Go ahead. And took it out of the way. Yep. And then what? Nailing it to the cross. Yes. Nailing it to the cross. That is what was nailed to the cross. Because if you take away the Ten Commandments, then how can we even sin? How is sin even imputed? How can you sin? When he said if we continue in sin, there remain no more sacrifice. Well, if there's no law, I can't sin. I, it's, it's impossible for me to sin if there is no law. And yet he says not for us to continue in sin. But he said he nailed the animal sacrifice to the cross. How do we know that? Well because after he was crucified, was crucified and ascended to heaven and the veil of the temple split no more Levitical priesthood therefore no one offering animal blood to save you, to atone for your sins. So, in 15, let's finish up 15. Last one. He said, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and taking it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. 15, brother. And having spoiled principalities and powers, uh -huh. he made a show of them uh -huh. openly, uh -huh. triumphing over them in it. Yes, triumphing over them in it. So, with that, I hope you got some understanding in our Messiah's name. And until next time, search the scriptures and prove all things.